We previously discussed the four levels of protein conformation. So we talked about primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure, and quaternary structure. Now we're going to talk about what that means in nature and what happens when we denature that. Protein conformation is the three-dimensional arrangement or shape of a polypeptide chain. It's described by secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure of the protein. So the protein conformation is the overall shape. Whether it's the normal, natural shape or a different shape is irrelevant. It is just called the protein conformation. What we call the native conformation is the way that the protein comes out in its natural form. That means under normal conditions, such as temperature and pH, this is the shape that we'll find a protein in, as long as we haven't done anything else to it. The native conformation gives it all of its biological activity. There are generally only one or two shapes in a native conformation. The reason we say one or two is it depends if something is there to bind. You might think of this like a baseball glove. While you're waiting for the ball to come, you keep the glove open. But as soon as the ball arrives, you close that so that it'll hold on to it. So those are kind of the two shapes we would have. Obviously, there's a small portion of time where it's going from one shape to the other. But once the thing arrives, in this case, the biological antibody or whatever the biological thing is, once it arrives, it may close down on it, do whatever it needs to do, and then re-release it. So those are considered natural conformations. What happens when we destroy that native conformation? Well, that is what we call denaturing. So denaturing is removing the native conformation of a protein. That protein will still have a conformation. It just won't be the native conformation at that point. So how do we do that? There are four common methods used to denature a protein. The most common method of denaturing is going to be heating. By adding heat to something, we denature it. So if you've ever cooked an egg, boiled an egg, anything like that, you've seen that it's been denatured. When you cook meat, you'll notice that it turns white. It changes its color, and that is considered denaturing. We can also prepare meat using another method of denaturing, which is to add acid. Theoretically, we can also use base, although we don't usually use that for cooking. But if we change the pH by adding either acid or base, you can cook something and you can denature it. One thing that's commonly made is ceviche, which is things like fish and shrimp, where we've added lemon or lime to it and that cooks it, which we actually call denatures the protein and makes it edible. We can also prepare other meats by putting some acid on it, so quite often you'll find marinades for meats that have a lot of acid in them, something like tomato or lemon or lime. Those types of things are commonly used in marinades. A third method that is used that's used commonly in our everyday life, but not so much for cooking, is to use a less polar solvent. Normally, proteins are found under aqueous conditions, which means there's lots of water. But if we find something that's less polar than water, still somewhat polar, but not completely polar, we can find that we denature the protein. Commonly, we use hand sanitizer to clean our hands. The major ingredient of the hand sanitizer is alcohol, and that alcohol is less polar than water. And so it denatures the protein by flipping it inside out. So what was what hated water before it on the inside, and now it comes out to the outside because it's less polar. And the fourth common method of denaturing is going to be using heavy metals. That's not really bad music. But rather, these metals tend to be lower on the periodic table. And we see two common ones. Those are lead and mercury. So you've probably heard of lead poisoning and mercury poisoning. And the reason those are considered poisons is because they can denature the protein. When we change the environment that the protein is found in, by changing the solvent, adding an acid or a base, changing the temperature, or adding a heavy metal, the protein becomes denatured because certain interactions are being destroyed. Specifically, we're going to be destroying all of those weak interactions those are the ones that are found in secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. So one of the things that happens when a protein is denatured 
is secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure are destroyed. Now recall that those are things like hydrogen bonds, electrostatic interactions, hydrophobic interactions, and disulfide bonds. But notice that nothing happens to the primary structure. Those amide bonds are very strong bonds and they're hard to destroy. What that tells us is that as the protein is denatured, since only secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure are destroyed, we call that unfolding so that the order of the amino acids is still the same, but it opens up. The protein opens up. And of course, when it opens up, it loses its chemical and physical properties because it's no longer in the same shape that it originally was. And because it no longer has the same shape, it is unable to perform the chemical reactions that it was designed to do which is why we say it, it loses its chemical properties. The second statement was that it loses its physical properties. What we mean by that is it's no longer as soluble in water, maybe because it got turned inside out and the hydrophobic parts are now on the outside, or maybe because what were ions before have been, been neutralized by adding acid or base, or maybe it makes a salt out of those heavy metals and that again is no longer soluble. As it becomes insoluble, it starts to solidify, so obviously it has become less soluble in the solvent than it originally was. And you can easily see this when you cook some egg whites. You'll notice that they start to solidify. They turn white, and then they start to solidify, and that's because they are becoming less soluble as they are heated up, and they're being denatured.